in Pennsylvania and tonight I'm going out for an evening hunt, a solo evening hunt. I checked my HuntWise app and the wind is going to be perfect for my, I call it my spot, which is kind of lame, but it's a spot that I've been hunting for the past two years. I shot a buck there, I shot a doe there, and I've seen a ton of animals there. Like I saw two bear there <laughs> the other weekend when I was hunting. Tonight the wind is good, the temperatures are a little warm, it's not even quite pre-rut yet, so right now the deer are in a feeding pattern. So they hang tight in their beds and then come out in the evening to feed. And as long as I'm in my saddle by five o'clock, I'll have about two full hours until last shooting light. So, so let's get ready. Okay, all right, let's do this. The sweet girl is gonna be sad, huh? Cause you need to come with. You can stay outside while I shoot my bow. Okay, come on. All right, let's move this target. That looks good. Hey. All right, let's see. Oh no, the fire finder dead. Range finder's dead. Huh, I'll have to see if I've replaced my batteries. Glad that I figured that out now, instead of when I'm out there. I think I'm at about 20 yards, so I'm gonna shoot first a little bit, and then I'll go replace the batteries. Dead deer. This is the battery that it needs. I don't have a replacement, so I'm gonna have to find a different range finder for tonight. Packs loaded up, bow is still on, and I found a backup range finder. So we're good to head into the woods. Oh, two more things. It's starting to rain. Temperatures are dropping. It feels like something good is going to happen tonight. So I'm gonna stay quiet. I'm gonna keep you put away. <laughs> and I'm gonna focus on hunting tonight. Hmm.
this is the situation that I was dealing with. She busted like right here, right behind where all of these sticks are. The other one was just over like right here, right where the laurel edge is, but this branch was in front of her. They came out right here and walked right, <laughs> right behind all of these branches to me. I thought that these branches were great cover so that they would walk the edge of the laurel and I would have my shots in here. But instead, <laughs> they came right to me. Oh my god. And because they busted me and looked at me, like not just caught my scent, like they busted me bad. Uh, I think I need to move and I don't even know if I should hunt here again for a little while. That Woo baby! So nothing else ended up coming out. That would have been perfect. That was so exciting and so much fun. I'm not going to go back to that spot for a couple of days. I'm going to go hunt somewhere else for the next two days. Tomorrow is the good, good, good day. Like really good day. Like I should be out in the morning and in the evening. It's going to be a good spot tomorrow though. So Nick went out as well. He was hunting a different spot. He pulled a trail camera, which we're looking at oh, now. Just look at that. Stop, I'm excited. <gasps> he's on it every three, no. every three days, he's on it. No. And I didn't even check all of them. I was like, oh, what the f***? I'm excited. Ow, who's that <laughs> Uh oh, mouth breather. I need my f nose fixed. So, this is from almost July. I think we can put a ground blind right here and, mm. kill, and kill this. But there's a deadfall. See that deadfall? Mm -hmm. It's going to be over the ground blind, which is not ideal. But mm -hmm. that's the only chance. There's not a single tree in here. Maybe during it. the day on Sunday we should get that in there. I think someone needs to hunt this tomorrow night. Mm. Because there are does. There's multiple <gasps> bucks. He's huge. Whoa, he's a wide boy. Oh, it gets way better. There's multiple bucks on here too. Mm. So there's a buck, 626. Uh, so we're going backwards in time. Okay, Let's go, f like, I want to see the recent stuff. Yeah. But I just, there was some other cool shit on here, and you never know what's going to walk through. Right, it could be a bobcat or bear, a bear. Bobcat. Wait till you see this one video. It is so f Actually, there are two videos on here that are unbelievably cool. Look, there are a lot of does, and so there's a. Oh my god, there's, there's a so giant. Many. There's a giant boulder. Watch your hand over the there's a giant time. boulder right here. Okay. So, and then there's a giant boulder right here. They have to come through here. Ah, uh, it's a pinch point. You know what? That's another thing that I was thinking about as I was like after the does like did their weird thing and didn't go where I thought they were gonna go. I was like, you know what? This isn't like a funnel. Like they can pop out anywhere. It's just like an edge. Oh. <gasps> Fisher. Massive. That's fisher. so cool. How cool is that? Oh my god. He's huge. How cool is that? Yeah, we need to. That is so cool. We need to hunt this. We need to figure out a way to hunt this. Because right, it's accessing it. Is there's the so much thing. game here. It's nuts. We're on to uh, the second trail camera. Oh, there's my bit. Yeah, so this damn branch got, like, mm. there's got to be a hundred videos of this branch. Mm -hmm. This trail camera was propped up on a stick. I mean, you had to use a climbing stick, you know what I mean? On public land, that's a good tactic to use so that your trail cameras don't get stolen. Also, it can help to minimize spooking the deer from the camera going off. Went from the best one ever to the worst, the worst one ever. Look, it's just ever. X, X it out, X it out. It just got the branch every single every time. time. <laughs> the muzzle loader arrived. So Nick's out here getting it all sighted in. We have the pellets, the bullets, the primers. This weekend, doe and bear muzzleloader season open. 
So that's why we're getting this thing together. Also, there has been a major cold front that is moving through right now, which is why I'm so bundled up. Um, so tonight we are going to hunt deer, wow, and I'm so it. excited. It won't even go down any further than that. That's like how much gunk is in it already. Woohoo! Love that puff of smoke. That's cool. What'd you say? It's brutal. Is it already off? It's just not even close. Like... Love it. Money. Money. Nice. Wait, wait. <coughs> they smell like <laughs> that can't got my mouth. Right. So, so that time you the bullet was pushed down all the way, correct? Yeah, and I adjusted it again. Oh, okay. Nice. Look, come look. <laughs> oh, money! That was aiming right here. An inch high at 40. Sweet. I can probably back it up a little more. So this was your first, and then you adjusted, and then this was your second, and the second, that was just improperly seated. Yeah, and then that was the last one. Beautiful, babe. So, I don't so are you going to move it at all, or are you going to leave it there? And then try it 40. I'm going to leave it there, but I kind of would like to back up to like 75, yeah, 80. Definitely. Just to see where I'm going. Because that'll be a more realistic range. Yeah, I'm not taking a 40 yard. If I'm taking a 40 yard shot, I'm as well my boat. Yeah, agreed. Be careful! What were those noises, huh? Oh my god, so excited! Huh? Okay. Okay. Nick's gonna finish up shooting. I'm back in here going to get some work done before this evening. So let me tell you about what's going on for this evening because holy crap, it's gonna be good. So, <laughs> so yesterday you saw all of the amazing trail camera footage. We got a Fisher on camera and I did a little research on fishers last night and they are these badass little predators that prey on anything and everything. They're opportunistic feeders. So they'll eat anything from a squirrel and a chipmunk, which is their primary diet, to a porcupine, which is very unusual because there aren't that many predators for porcupines. Um, there actually is some evidence that fisher will eat white-tailed deer, like they'll prey on fawns, although it's not a significant portion of their diet. They'll eat reptiles, they'll eat birds, turkey, everything. So they are very cool. Their populations used to be very high back in the early 19th century before deforestation happened and ruined their habitat as well as habitat for literally every single species um, essentially. I'm being a little dramatic but it's true. And in recent years there have been conservation efforts to increase the fisher populations again so there have been um, fishers released in like the 60s and 70s in West Virginia and in New York and then back in the late 90s there were 190 fishers released in Pennsylvania, and this fisher that we caught on trail camera could very well be one of the offspring from that initiative in the 90s, which is just really, really cool to think about. Um, also, maybe I'm romanticizing it, but it's just, it's, it's cool. It's really freaking cool. So anyways, so you saw, you saw the fisher, you saw the bears, you saw the bucks. Oh my god. So tonight we're going to hunt that spot and it is a phenomenal night condition wise. So right now here I'm actually going to read you some stuff from the HuntWise app because this is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Um, so I use HuntCast on HuntWise's app. If you're not familiar I'll have a link in the description box down below. Full disclosure I am sponsored and working with them and I freaking love it especially for whitetail like they are the kings of the whitetail world and they've teamed up with Jeff Sturgis who I actually filmed a video with about the whitetail rut which has so much information so if you're hunting whitetail and you're into that kind of stuff a link will pop up somewhere but anyways 
So right now, today is October 16th. And right now we are still technically in the lull. However, the lull is more myth than fact. Bucks disappear, but they don't become nocturnal. So that rings true to what we saw. We had that buck on camera all the time. And then right in that late September, early October mark, he disappeared. Instead, and this is again from Jeff, Bucks are seeking reclusive cover that they can safely call home away from hunting pressure. On non-pressured hunting grounds, bucks will continue to move during daylight, but they will travel far and wide to locate low-risk daylight food. So the best way, listen here, this is the big point, the best way to beat the October lull is to find pressure-free tree stand locations that take advantage of cold front evening food source movement. So this particular area is very hard to get to. It's a pain in the ass if I'm being real. And there aren't that many hunters that are willing to hike into this area, especially during archery season. Rifle season may be a different story but we're currently in archery season. Also, in terms of food sources, the acorns are popping this time of year, and there is tons of cover in this area in the form of mountain laurel and dense pines. So, tonight, the temperature has dropped significantly from yesterday. We are in the middle of a cold front. We're gonna hunt this evening, targeting that evening food sourcing, movement, whatever. What does Jeff call it? Come on, Jeff. Evening food source movements. <laughs> I'm very excited. And we have friends coming this weekend, so we are in for a, a lot of fun. So anyways, I'm gonna get some work done, and then we'll see you when it's time to hunt. So we are headed out tonight. It is opening day of muzzleloader in Pennsylvania. Um, in our area we are able to hunt doe and bear. So tonight Marta and I are taking the muzzleloader out and I technically have a bear tag and a doe tag so depending on what walks out. The rest of the guys are headed out and they're all taking their bows. We have a plethora of opportunities tonight a lot of people that'll be in the woods. The conditions aren't fabulous, but overall we 
We did experience a cold front yesterday. So last night's hunt was absolutely beautiful, but nobody saw anything except for the two, hi girl, except for the two raccoons that I saw. And then we just had a lot of fun last night by the fire and we're going out again for this evening. Lots of hunters in the woods. It's gonna be hopefully a good night. Although that's what I thought last night with the cold front. I checked the trail camera after I got back from last night's hunt. Tons of bucks, no more bears. I caught the bobcat on video again. So there's, there's just so much life in this area. It's really, really cool to see, even though we didn't see anything last night. I'm hoping that our luck will transfer into tonight. So anyway. Let's do it. So this is the reason why wearing gloves is great. Uh, Cause then you don't have to deal with this mess. Got job done. Me and Marta are going to drag the deer out now. I'm whispering still, <laughs> which is funny, but also there are other people hunting. So, you know, if we can be, just be quiet, that's, you know, better for them. Anyways, we're gonna grab the heart out of the gut pile and drag this girl out. Marta and I drug my deer out last year and that drag was like twice as long as what we have to do tonight. Our drag tonight's not so bad. So let's do it. Okay. I'm gonna poke a hole through her ear. Slip this through there. That. Then I probably could cut that, but that's just gonna be just fine. <laughs> Killing it. Go, Marta, go. So we drug the deer, I don't even know, maybe a hundred yards. And we decided that we were making too much noise. And also we would be dragging that deer out for another hour. I thought it was way closer. It definitely is closer than my deer last year, but it was still really far. So, it was last year. yeah, so the snow helps it slide when you drag it. So it was, yeah, this one was a little tough. A lot of down logs to lift her over. Um, so we decided to just head back to camp. And once everybody gets back from the hunt, we'll grab beers and we'll head out and we'll just have a party drag out later. So she's gutted, she's tagged. The tents are so perfect. So. Yes, yes. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Hmm. What's that smell, big girl? Normally Abby's scared of the smell of deer, but she's not scared of the smell of the guts. So that's a good sign. We're back. We're meeting up with the boys. We're gonna finish dragging this deer out. Get her skinned, make a fire, have a good old time. It's a nice, it's a nice one. She was smaller than I thought that she was, but she was the, she was the big one of the little. group. She's definitely not little. So this was the entrance wound right here. Um, and it just went right through both of her lungs. When she dropped, it looks like it looked like her back legs dropped before her front, and I immediately said to Marta, like I spined her for sure. Did you guys get it on film? No, nothing on film. No. Not until after the fact. Is she running or walking? Running so f fast. I think we kicked her out when we walked in because we weren't even in. We weren't even set up yet, like we were out No, Marta watched them walk out of the laurel. First I thought it was like 70 yards, but then whenever we walked to recover her, I actually think it was less than that. I ended up having so much fun. The rest of the night, I didn't pick up the camera a single time, but thankfully Nick captured some of this footage. We finished skinning the deer and then we ate 
food, we drank beer, we cooked backstraps right out of the deer that I harvested, and we just had an awesome, awesome time. So that is it for this video. We've got meat in the freezer, we're on the board. It was such a fun hunt, and I was glad to be able to share this experience with Marta, and then to have our friends and family there to celebrate and have a good time. And I'm glad to share this with you as well. I hope you enjoy every single second of the rest of the season because I know that I will and I'm excited to share the rest of this with you. But that is it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.